Hey y'all, Kentucky Farmer here, and welcome back to the second episode in my GPS mod tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to cover some more advanced topics and options. Uh, if you haven't seen the first episode in this series, I recommend you go back and start there. I'll uh, put a link to it in the description below. So now I want to demonstrate the auto turn functionality. And one of the areas that that really shines is with fertilizer spreaders and sprayers because they don't actually contact the ground, right? So it's just mounted to the tractor. And these sorts of implements allow you to have really nice tight turning radiuses. And I'll, I'll go into more depth into that here in a minute. So again, we're going to set our, you can hit new if you need to, um, set auto. And then we're going to just nudge that over a little bit to the right. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to set up auto turn and we want it to turn left because we want to keep in the field. If you're on the other side of the field, you could tell it here so that it would turn right when it gets to the end, but we want to go left. And this, every time it turns, it'll automatically switch this, right? So it'll go left hand turn. And then when it comes here, it'll do a right hand turn, left hand, right hand, all the way until it gets to the end of the field. So we've set our width, we've set our position, we've set our turn, so everything's good to go. So I'm going to turn on my tractor, and I'm going to get lined up here, and then I'm going to turn on my fertilizer spreader, and lock on, and turn on my cruise control. And now I'm not doing anything, I'm not touching, I'm not steering, I'm not holding down the gas, it's completely driving on its own right now. And we're going to let this go ahead and it'll drive all the way down to the end of the field. And then once it gets down there, it's going to automatically make a turn and start into the next lane. So we'll go ahead and just watch this for a little bit here and I'll fast forward as needed. Alright, so we're approaching the end of the field. You can see this little countdown here is measuring the distance to the end of the field. And so now it got to the end, so it made its turn, and now it's heading back to the other side. If you notice, it did a pretty good job there. Uh, it, it missed a little bit on the end with that turn, and if you wanted to, you could uh, come back and clean that up. Now, another thing you can do is you have the, um, the auto turn stop distance or sorry, this is the auto stop distance, right? So, uh, I don't think that this actually affects when it turns. I think that this only affects, um, yeah, because you can't go less than one, so it's already all the way at the end. Uh, but if you were doing auto stop instead of auto turn, you could dial this down so that it stops sooner before it gets to the end of the field. But as you can see, you know, I'll, I'll go even farther with it. It actually doesn't impact this uh, while you're in auto turn mode. It would be kind of nice if it did and if you could go um, like a few meters negative to get it to actually drive out of the field and then turn in the headland area. I think that would be a neat feature, but currently it doesn't do that. Uh, while it's driving, another thing I can show you is this feature over here, GPS line mode. So these are the lines, right? So it's got our far right, left, and then our center marker. We can elevate them. If you look now, see they come up off the ground. That's really handy when you're harvesting or if you're like trying to run the fertilizer in grown crops. Because uh, when it's on the ground, if there's if there's ground cover, you don't you can't see the lines. It's uh, buried by the, um, the the crop. And so by elevating them up off the ground like that, you can actually see them. It makes it easier to follow them if you're in uh, passive mode and not active mode. And then I can click that button again and now they can completely go away so you, you don't see the lines at all anymore. 
but this is the kind of the default mode here where they're see they're down at ground level there So, and if you notice, even though we've got this uh, auto turn distance cranked all the way down to 9, it, it still goes to the end of the field when it makes its turn. So, what I can do is I can change this here to stop at field end. And now we should stop probably quite a ways from the end of the field when we get down to the other side. Because we've got this... Uh, oh, we, we can crank it even farther even. Yeah, let's go, go all the way to 30. Pretty sensitive. 30.5, good enough. And I'm not sure if that's meters or feet. Or something else. <laughs> I'm guessing it's meters. Because it looks like our, our working width is set in meters. So there you go, you can see we stopped pretty far from the end of the field. And then I can turn this down to one, which is the default. Uh, I'll keep driving it here. There we go, and we'll make our turn. I'll lock on and then turn on cruise control and now when it gets to the end of the field and goes to stop it should stop much closer to the end of the field uh, while it's driving here another feature that I wanted to point out so you have the save and load option and you can pick a number slot I don't even know how high it goes uh, but you can pick a number and then you can save the current settings to that slot or you can pick the number and then load the settings out of that slot or you can delete them uh, i almost never use this here we go we're getting to the end of the field so it should go pretty close to the end there we go let's start, see it stop one meter like the implements one meter from the edge of the field So we'll keep going this way, and I'll turn on auto turn again. So with the, the save and load, I, I very rarely use this function because almost every implement you can configure and set up with about three button clicks. So by the time you you know keep track of and remember which tractor and implement saved at what number and load it, like. It just makes more sense to just use this stuff. The only thing that I could really see using this for is if you had... Um, so like there's that big plow, which that has a special offset and the width is a little tricky to get set up. And then there is some hay equipment that has offsets to it that you may want to set up special. Uh, again, like the, the moco mowers or the bale wrappers or things like that. And I could see saving that stuff, but honestly, even with that, I, I very rarely save it. And, you know, typically, if it's so complex that you feel the need to save all the settings for it, it may almost be better suited to use course play for it instead of GPS mod. So, another neat feature over here is your course from neighbor. So say for example you are doing hay and you've got your rake set up uh, with a particular width and you want to run the baler with the same course spacing so that it goes up and down the windrow. You can drive up next to the windrower that's configured and click this and it will copy the course over from the neighbor. All right, so it's finished there because it's out of fertilizer. The only other settings we have in here is these uh, free lane plus minus, and uh, I'm actually gonna have to grab a different tractor and we'll go to a different field and I can kind of show you what that would be used for and how uh, this auto turn functionality, which worked pretty good here for the um, fertilizer spreader can actually get kind of complicated. 
I'm actually going to go ahead and pick that up again in the next episode where we'll go ahead and completely cultivate a field from beginning to end using uh, GPS mod. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you found it useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. That helps a lot. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing for more Farming Simulator videos. I'm Kentucky Farmer. Thanks for watching.